G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip I'm going to run through a new method I'm using to wick up a garden bed down the back in our small little garden area. So wicking beds are a fantastic idea and we've been gardening with them now for a number of years and I've made up a few different styles of reservoirs in the bases and today's is just going to be slightly different because what I'm trying to do in my wicking beds is create a massive water void. That means more water goes in there that which means a lot longer between you having to top up the reservoir. In my bed I've progressively made a larger and larger void spaces in the reservoirs um, so we can hold a maximum amount of water in there and then create wicking points using the coarse river sand and I've used rocks as void creators in certain bed builds but I'm pretty much all down to only using the coarse river sand as the wicking agent. Uh, just one other thing we do need to touch on and that is you know you can build as big a reservoir as you want but it's not going to do squat if you don't have a decent soil blend. You really do need to have a decent soil blend in your beds if the plants are going to grow well. So yeah, they're, they're the two main things when it comes to wicking beds. So I'm starting to lose the sun, so I should stop nattering on and give you a look at where we're up to. Uh, basically, this is my little wicking bed um, area down the back here. So we have a half IBC here and it's already been used as a wicking bed out the front. You can see the little drainage port down there. Uh, that's a little 20 mil or three quarter inch barb fitting with some shade cloths just zip tied on the inside. And then I've popped a grommet in through the inside. And then this is the little overflow port down there. So a very basic design. Now in the past I've used the slotted irrigation pipe. In fact, that lot there came out of this bed. And the other one came out of that bed there, which I need to set up. But this time I'm opting for some recycled bread crates. Um, we got second hand. So what I've made up with these guys is basically a bit of a false floor. Uh, what I've done is I've cut one in half and I've joined them all together using zip ties. I had to drill a few extra holes just to give some extra support, uh, mainly because, you know, there's going to be a fair weight of um, sand and soil on top of these guys. So it pushes up nicely against that wall there and that there. And there is a little bit of a gap down either side there and over there but that's um, not to worry about in the center you can see that i have cut a hole in there goes a pot plant which i'll have some um, mesh down the bottom to stop the sand moving um, out through those holes in the bottom but that'll basically act as a wicking core to allow some water from the center to come up the other wicking points will be in every corner there will be some sand and then in these two corners as well and they will be where the the bulk of the water wicks up from. One thing I am doing, because this floor is pretty spongy, is I made up a little bit of a stand over some left with some leftover aquaponics pipe. So that there is just going to sit underneath here. There we go, now we've got her in. And that little jobby goes in there. And then I have some weed mat, and that just sits in the bottom there. And that will be filled up with sand and act as a wick to bring the water up into the center of the bed. Now, quite obviously, I can't put sand in there because it's going to fall through the gaps. So, I have some geo textile that was left over from when we had the retaining wall built here. This is what is going to cover up the wicking cell and prevent the sand from falling all the way through. So, here's another idea for you folks. These drink crates are a lot easier to come by secondhand than the bread crates. All you would need to do is cut them down to around about 100 mil or 4 inches and then zip tie them all together and then you could either wrap them with the geotextile that I'm using or something similar or just lay it over the top and weigh it down with the sand around the outside and that sand will act as the wick to bring the water from the very base of the bed all the way up to the soil level and you'll also find that the geotextile will act as a bit of a wick as well. Can't believe that, almost forgot the water inlet. Now it can't go down in this corner because sand's going to be down there, so it has to go through the crate itself. I think if I just come and take out um, the section here, we should have more than enough room. Just swap hands, hey? There we go, that's better. I am right handed after all. Would make a left-handed joke, but then Bianca would see this and punch me. Just quickly, I do have a bevel cut on the end of the fill pipe there, and now we've got to secure it to the side wall here. Off to get the drill and zip tie. So this is pretty easy to do. I'm just going to drill a hole, or a couple of holes actually, just in the side of the tote here, my dull drill bit. And then 
I think I need to drill a couple of new holes in this drainage pipe. I like to go across on a bit of an angle. Oops, sorry camera. There we go like that. And that will give us somewhere to pop the zip tie through. So just to keep it neat, I'm putting the zip tie through the inside there. And then we'll finish it off through the pipe on the inside. There we go, straight through. That was lucky. A bit hard one-handed. There we go. I can tighten that up in a minute. But the reason I put these zip ties on is just so any um, curious fingers don't come along and pull it out of the reservoir, which will um, cause issues later. So now the fill pipe's in. We can do the cloth. So I think that should be more than enough. And all I'm going to do is just push it down the sides here. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that there's enough cloth down the bottom here to come up higher than the sand level. Let's see what it's like up this end. Yep, it comes up nicely. Leaves the slack there. Go around and do the other side. Just quickly, I could have gone about this slightly different, wrapped the cells that are going in here um, with this geotextile, but I worked out that it will actually use less geotextile to do it this way. And yeah, now we're ready to put the bucket in the centre. And we'll just cut uh, across my very blunt garden scissors into here, and then we can push this down, and we can start to fill her up with some sand. So this is the sand I'm using, it's just a coarse river sand with a few other little pebbles and bits and pieces in it um, but that's good enough for the purpose here. First off I'm just going to do the corners just to weigh that fabric down with the drain corner. Also run a bit down those edges over there where there was a small gap. That side as well. Now for the bucket in the middle. There we go, just push it down firmly. I'll do the same for these sections in the corner just to help them wick. Push a little bit down this gap here. I'll do the same on the other side as well. So I did work out that this reservoir is going to give me well over 100 litres worth of water in the base that will be available to the plants. So now I'm just going to put about a 40 millimetre or inch and a half layer of sand on top of the water cell. Now the idea of having this sand layer is the water will wick up in the corners and the centre and it will disperse through this layer uh, giving it more contact with the soil that's going in. On top of the sand I like to use a mulch barrier just to stop the organically rich soil going down into the reservoir potentially causing issues like we've had here in the past. I'm using sugarcane mulch but you could use you know straw. Other people like to use the weed mat or the shade cloth and that sort of stuff but for me I like a bit of organic matter. Also gives a compost worm something to feed on when they travel that deep. So this soil that's going into the bed, it came from a couple of garden beds out the front that I mixed together. It's fairly sandy. Um, it doesn't form big clumps that stick together. When you squeeze it, um, it falls apart very easily. There's a little bit of perlite in there. So with that soil, I've half filled the bed. Then I've added in a bag full of potting mix just to add some extra organic matter because that blend from out the front was fairly sandy. Also added in a bag of our favourite commercial compost, it's a 5-in-1 blend. Normally I would use our own, but we just don't have any going at the moment. And then a cup worth of the slow-release organic pellets go in. And those pellets will be broken down slowly by the moisture and bacteria in the bed and become plant available. Add some more soil in, give that all a good mix around with the fork. And then at the end I just topped it off with some more compost and gave it a good mix around. And there you go. So now all there's left to do is um, grab the hose and fill up the reservoir, the inlet there, and then um, yeah, once it runs out the little exit down the other side, we know she's full and right to go. And then tomorrow I'll come back and top her with mulch. Can't today, I use the last of it on the sand layer, and we'll also plant out some seedlings if they're ready to go tomorrow as well. Now, I do hope that this has helped you with a few ideas on how you can use repurposed things, not stolen second-hand bread crates, please, people. Uh, repurposed items to create a large uh, reservoir in the base of your IBC. Uh, don't forget that I've also used the slotted ag pipe. Actually works out fairly cheap um, when you're buying a large roll and making up a couple of beds, be them square or the round ones like our other tanks we have on the go. Do keep in mind wicking beds, two major components, large water reservoir to stretch out the time you need to get out here to fill it up. Uh, so there's always gonna be moisture available for the biota, the bacteria in your plants and the compost worms. 
And also too, speaking of which, you need a nice organically rich soil to feed those same bacteria and compost worms so they can pass the nutrients onto your plants if they're all locked up in organic matter. So just keep those two things in mind. Um, and yeah, you should be right to go with your own wicking beds. I would like to thank you all though for coming along and tuning into the channel and the clips. I really do appreciate it. Uh, feel free to share them around if you think they're gonna help out your family and friends and give them a thumbs up while you're at it. A special thanks needs to go to those Farm Your Own Yard website members. Thank you very much, folks. And also the YouTube membership program members. Thank you too for continuing to support the channel. Uh, would like to uh, just point out that I have some super contributors. If you could check out their websites and their Facebook pages down below, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and I think they would too. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you've enjoyed this um, very short instructional. I better um, make a move up to the house because the sun's about to set. Do hope you're well and happy and your gardens are booming. And I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks, and have a top one.